The MVP race has heated up, and while there is a big push to give Nikola Jokic a much-deserved third MVP, I want you to be fully aware of another player's impact on their team. With a surprise number one seed in the Thunderdome we call the Western Conference, the aptly named Thunder have vanquished all comers by leveraging the immense skills of one player. And if you're the best player on the best team in the toughest conference, why not make that person the NBA's MVP? I have to tell you, the first thing I noticed when I started digging through the footage was how often SGA goes left when he scores in the pick and roll. Considering he uses this action 30% of the time, it was startling that no matter the direction of the screen, he'd find a way to turn this into a drive to his left. They like to set flat screens where Shea has a choice of which direction to go in, and I found very few instances of him scoring when going to his right. And this all makes sense. For a righty going to his left, his shooting hip and elbow are naturally aligned to the hoop, so he can get into his patented midi pull-up game that has him ranked second behind only KD in the mid-range. And it's not like you can say, force him right on his pick and rolls, since he does just enough of them to keep the defense honest, and going to his strong hand means it's even harder to keep him from getting to the rim. Another action they absolutely love to run is the ghost screen from Isaiah Joe. A ghost screen in this context means Joe won't even create contact. As an elite shooter, the quicker he can get out of there, the faster SGA can get going to his left downhill. Joe's man doesn't want to leave him because the possibility of a pop for an open three is too great. And that means Shea has only his man to beat, and with a variety of skip moves that keep his defender off balance, it's almost impossible to keep him from taking a good shot. If you're defending the Gilgis Alexander pick and roll in the playoffs, the biggest fear you'd have is rejection of the screen to his left. He loves to do this, catching not only the primary defender out of position, but the help defense isn't there because they were anticipating him using the screen and coming right at them. The scouting report would probably say something about forcing him right to use the ball screen so there's some help and maybe there's some hope in contesting at the rim since it's pretty damn hard to stop his mid-range pull-up game to his left. Now it's time to talk about the part of his game where he earns that paycheck and all the MVP hype, isolations. Of course, to be the MVP of the league, you need to be the guy the coach gives the ball to and says, I don't care how, just go get us a bucket and the most common finish he has is after driving left, naturally, he will spin back to the middle and create a shot over that left shoulder. He is so quick with his move that I'm not sure there's much you could do to stop it even if you anticipated it as a defender. With his downhill speed, his defender desperately tries to cut him off, but a longer than usual right foot plant out in front stops him on a dime, and then he's quickly spinning with a slight fade to keep that separation into an easy 12-footer. And it doesn't have to be a pull-up jumper, mind you. He sees the defense come over to contest what would normally be a jump shot. So, he continues towards the hoop with a beautiful hanging release on the way down. Here's another drive to his left out of an isolation. He sees the held defense waiting for him at the dotted line. So he throws that right foot in front, lands on a jump stop, then spins back over that left shoulder, beating his man badly in the process. He again loves to go to his left on the majority of his scores in this category, and his handle and shiftiness are unparalleled. His delay out of the tween allows him to split his feet so he can push off with his back foot, while the shin angle of the front leg is acute, enabling an explosive first step. Now, watch how he uses a bound step to get by his initial defender. An inexperienced player would continue to go towards the hoop and get their shot blocked but SGA kept his eyes up, sees a defensive player of the year coming over, and turns that bounce step expertly into a fadeaway off the glass. Elite skill on display. His ball handling is a key reason why he keeps his turnover percentage so low, ranking 8th amongst high usage players. And taking care of the ball should be a prerequisite for any MVP candidate, especially if you consider that MVP stands for Manscaped is very powerful, and their new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra packs all the power you'll need. If you want to get your balls into the basket, they've got to be well kept, and their dual skin safe blade heads provide an unparalleled level of trimming from the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. While the trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cuts through hair with ease, it's incredibly gentle on the skin. 
But here comes the real showstopper, the foil blade. Crafted to transcend the boundaries of your typical trim with the trimmer blade, this foil blade is designed to leave you with a finish that's irresistibly sleek and utterly bare. I love the bigger LED light that illuminates the hard to reach areas so they're ready for their close up. The rechargeable weed whacker means you'll never have to leave the house with ear or nose hair sticking out and because it's waterproof, cleaning is easy. Right now, with my code BBALL, I can get you 20% off your order and two free gifts. Some of the most comfortable boxers I've ever worn and a travel bag to keep all your Manscaped products safe and handy. The way Shea moves on the floor, I have no doubt he's using Manscaped. And on this ISO at the end of the third quarter, the level of ball handling skill is fantastic. Behind, behind, tween, tween, watch that front foot. Just as it's about to plant, he slides it back another 12 inches. This shin angle is crucial to enabling an explosive first step. Once he sees two defenders come to him, he loads onto the inside right foot, pushes backwards for separation, then rises up for a wide open 15 footer. But he doesn't need a ton of fancy dribbling to get him into the basket. A simple tween gallop gets him going left, and when he's cut off, it's his patented spin over the left shoulder into an open 13 foot fadeaway. The Thunder are able to space the floor very well, and they will get Shea playing off of penetration from other players into spot-up catches where he can sometimes find a catch-and-shoot three ball, or he can split his feet on the catch and explode right to the basket for an easy finish at the rim. However, it's his three-point shooting in these situations that has let him down, converting a suboptimal 33% and dragging his overall points per possession in this category down to his lowest level in the half court. While it's great he can take a break from being the primary penetrator of their offense, it looks like his rhythm could be slightly off, causing these shots to brick off the rim quite often. I'm always studying the ball height when the knees begin to straighten into the jump, and since SGA is getting to his set point at this moment, it is just slightly early in my book, and it'll also add too much arc to his shots, making it too difficult to control and leading to a lot of misses. One area that he's been absolutely great in is posting up. Like I've said for years, we need more and more guards to get down on that block. He clearly favors the left block by a wide margin, and you should not be surprised that he loves going to his left, either to shoot a turnaround over that right shoulder or to spin baseline and use his quickness to get easy shots off. He does this less than 5% of the time, and I'd say he should double this. Of course, if defense has really started figuring out how often he goes to his left, he might have to continue to develop this part of his game. But with his size and length, I don't see how normal sized guards could stop him anyway. Passing wise, he's fine. There aren't a lot of examples of him utilizing superior vision to squeeze passes into impossible spaces. And this is what separates Jokic and Luka from SGA. His superior gravity constantly opens up easy reads for him, which he can make on time and on target, and it's a huge reason why the Thunder lead the league in wide open three-point frequency. However, the team as a whole just doesn't take many three-point shots, and I'd love to see them find a few more if they're going to make them like this. His best read are lifts to the weak side and skips off of his drives, and these are the kind they should try and mine more. That said, I was worried their record would suffer if another team got hot from behind the arc, but their record isn't that bad when the other team hits four or more threes than they do. So quality over quantity works well for them. Defensively, he led the league in steals, and there's one play above all others that he tortures opposing offenses with, stealing the post-entry pass when they think they've got an advantage down there. It's a real luxury to have a lead guard with this kind of quickness and length be able to step in and steal so many passes to an area of the floor that the offense assumes they'll get a ton of buckets in. He's a difference maker on this end without question, and all I can say to their opponents is they'd better be very careful making that post pass when SGA is in the area. Stocks are a new category when you combine steals and blocks. Two things that don't normally go hand in hand based on player type, but Shea gets his share of block shots and an unusual amount of them come from three point shots. It puts their opponents on high alert whenever he's in the vicinity and if you can't get it off quick enough or high enough, then those long arms will wreak havoc on those long range bombs and his performance on this end of the floor is more impactful than Luka or Jokic, potentially putting him even closer to the top of the MVP list. 
This decision will be ridiculous for the next three or four years until Wemby starts winning them all, and stepping back and looking at SGA's game in totality had better make you think long and hard about him being the MVP.